Welcome to A Lunch with Biggie, a podcast about small business and creatives sharing their stories and inspiring you. My guest today has a passion for books and for bringing local authors and artists to share their work and celebrate their spirit of art, literacy, and community in a collaborative space. He is co-owner of Orlando's only independently owned used bookstore, Joybird Books. Please welcome Andrew Walker to the show. What's going on, Andrew? Hey, how's it going? Doing all right, man. Doing all right. So first question I always ask, what's your go-to sandwich? Oh, go-to sandwich. So I am a huge fan of the low rider at Pom Poms, but without turkey because we're vegetarians. Here. Okay. But low rider on, uh, on wheat, maybe sourdough sometimes, but it's like an avocado, um, uh, sour cream, black beans, all that stuff, but pressed into a sandwich. So tell folks a little bit about Joybird Books. Um, how do you guys like, you know, just kind of tell them a little bit about your story, how you guys um, came about with the name and then how you guys, you know, tell people about it. Sure. Yeah. So uh, I like to go on this one website where there's a lot of uh, auctions that happen. And one of them that I just so happened to stumble across was uh, a pallet. Well, I don't want to say pallet because they weren't on a pallet. That would have been nice, but um, 10,000 X library books up in, uh, Rome, Georgia. So it's like the, what would that be? North, uh, Northwest corner of Georgia there. Uh, and I was like, oh, that'd be funny. You know, I'm just going to put in a chance bid, see what happens. And then it turns out I was the only one that put in a bid. And so by default, they said, well, congratulations. You have 10,000 X library books waiting for you up here. Uh, they don't ship them. And so I had to go on out and, uh, <laughs> and pick them up, which was an adventure all in its own right. But um, yeah, I, I have all the messages from when we actually uh, won that auction as well, which is really funny because uh, Ollie was completely taken by surprise, basically. And we were like, well, I guess we have 10,000 books. What are we going to do? Uh, well, let's think about opening a, a bookstore. <laughs> so let's let's rewind a little yeah, here because yeah. I, I'm assuming you, you either A, were already selling books before mm, no so you you basically everything just kind of started based on you winning the auction and you just yep. kind of like i'm now doing this yep i was like well we have ten thousand books and we don't have anywhere to put them and i don't want them to just sit in storage now so uh really we didn't even start selling books until until uh we won the auction and then we started doing those pop-up markets and uh, you know, just kind of took off from there, basically. And this, just to give a, a level of time, I believe this was in March of 21. Yeah. So yep. you did March, if, if I remember correctly, you guys <laughs> went March of 21 is what I saw. Mm -hmm. October, you guys kind of, I guess between March and October, you guys were looking for doing pop-ups and yeah. trying to figure things out and figure out a location. You guys found a location in, in October. And in November, you actually started. <laughs> yeah, the store opened. You opened a store on Nash on Small, <laughs> on Small business, business Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. So still haven't beaten that day in terms of like actual sales that we made and stuff. Like that was a that was a crazy day. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> obviously that. I mean, the whole thing in itself is kind of is is really amazing. So let's so let's do a little bit of a origin just to kind of get an idea. Like, where did yeah. you get where did you guys get a passion for books come from? Yeah. So uh, Ollie's always worked at uh, different bookstores and uh, worked at the library systems uh worked at the library systems as well in orange county um as well as winter park before they switched over to the new building that they're in um so ollie's always been around books i uh, went to school for uh english uh, does a lot of poetry has several poems published um and then for me i pretty much just chose to go into an english major in high school because i thought that it was what i was best at <laughs> yeah i thought it was well this is the easiest thing to do so why not and that's uh you know i not i didn't stay ambivalent like that don't worry but i uh, yeah i don't know they just kind of grew because i just always liked books i always liked you know reading and just even just identifying the story behind the actual book itself is very fun too so yeah but then uh, english major as well that's uh i mean I, i'm a little dumbfounded because i knew i had done some reading and stuff like that and i knew that both of you um and ollie ollie bird is your is your partner the co-owner yes. as well of uh of joy bird books and uh and so i kind of knew that but i was always amazed because i know you know like I'm actually, I'm in shock because I didn't realize, I thought you had done, I knew you had done some pop-ups before, mm -mm. but I didn't realize that you, once you got the books, you're like, well, I got the books. Now I got to open a store. Yep. Um, and a lot of times it's almost like 
it, I mean, I'm, if what it feels like, it almost feels like you didn't have any time to actually have any doubt or react. It was kind of like, well, I now I have this. So now what do I do? Oh, right. I got to do the next step. Exactly. Um, because that's kind of it's one of those where a lot of people kind of sometimes may um, may kind of sit and wait and do oh, the yeah. what ifs and the could have. I mean, yeah, you can sit and wait your whole life. You know, yeah. that's the thing. And but I. Uh, I guess something that helps me is that I don't think about it in terms of like, you know, oh, but if I do this, then this can go wrong. I don't think about what goes wrong. You know, I think about like, oh, how can I make this go right? Yeah. You know, and it's a, it's a difficult mindset to get out of because I've always struggled with anxiety and stuff as well. But uh, eventually you just kind of have to let go of all that a little bit. And that's really the only way you're going to progress because otherwise you're going to sit at home and you know, do nothing. Out of curiosity, <laughs> are there exercises or things that you do to kind of get you out of that mindset? Um, because obviously it's very easy to, it's amazing how your mindset goes. Like if you put yourself in a positive mindset, mm -hmm. obviously you can go and pers pursue and go, go forward. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you can have that negative mindset where right. the anxiety kind of kicks in. So are there exercises or anything that you guys do uh, to kind of help you get through or over the hump when, when you have yeah. those moments? I mean, Ollie, I, I don't want to speak for Ollie because Ollie has their own things that they do. Um, but eventually that's something else as you start to learn what works for you in terms of like getting you into a more positive, you know, headspace. But for me specifically, um, I would say I, I used to do a lot of meditation with the Orlando Zen center. So that's, that's helpful. Um, but just trying to be mindful, just go outside and, and just, uh, use all of your senses and look around and I don't know, it sounds really like cheesy trying to say it out loud, but yeah. it's just a matter of like, uh, you know, just, just take a break again, put it, put it down and kind of walk away for a minute. And then when you come back to it, you won't feel that, you know, but what if anxiousness, yeah. at least in my experience. Okay. I love that. I think that's, I think that's great. What, um, so I do want to have, I do kind of want to go the route of asking, I know you kind of skimmed over it but that was one of the things that you and i when we first met right mm -hmm. when you guys opened i came in um my daughter's obsessed with books so i kind of i wanted to kind of come in i wanted to check out the store i also you know you're in a great spot you're next to kelly's homemade ice oh, yeah. cream uh you know so it's a great little neighborhood area and one of the things i just kind of you don't want you to go a little more into because i think it's a funny and an entertaining story about your 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 pickup of the books now it's funny because <laughs> i've actually been um i've actually been near rome georgia i was oh, actually okay. just there so i kind of really? laughed nice. when i it like it stuck i'm like rome georgia why does it sound so familiar mm -hmm. and i know some folks that live in uh you know that are in that area and they actually have like a they own a sports team there like an indoor nice. soccer team okay. in rome georgia so i was like nice. so i was like no way i'm like they drove this far i'm like this is at least five and a half maybe six oh, yeah. hours oh yeah and it probably took you longer because you were in a u-haul yep it took me about i think it was almost seven or eight hours to get home and i i uh I did it in one shot. So, all right, I'll, I'll start the whole yeah, story. I don't, no, you don't have, I mean, remember, this is a quick lunch break. So, right, I mean, so right. just kind of give me I'll, an I'll idea of, of like, you know, at least like when you got there and what your expectations were. And then right. when like, and then all of a sudden, like what you had to deal with. Yeah. So, uh, we win the auction. I book a flight to, uh, Atlanta. I get into Atlanta. Um, I get a Uber to a U-Haul place. I get a U-Haul, I drive, and I, I cheaped out. I got the cheapest U-Haul I could get because I'm, I'm silly like that. But um, I drove up to Rome, Georgia, which took about two hours. Um, we get, I get, I'm just by myself through all this. So I get to the place um, probably 4 o'clock. They close at 5 o'clock. So I'm already, they're already like tapping their feet and crossing their arms, glaring at me like, are you kidding me right now? Because uh, I, I really underestimated how just how many books 10,000 books is uh and so it's just these boxes stacked up and they didn't stack them on pallets so we can't easily move them we have to literally restack them onto um the hand dollies. cart or something yeah exactly uh and you can't even slide the dollies underneath it because it's carpet so <laughs> you had to like literally restack them every single one and they were like oh you brought help right and i was like no I didn't think it would be this bad. <laughs> um, and so thankfully the guys are actually really nice. They helped me load it all up. Right. Um, it's completely done. Uh, 
and then I go to move the U-Haul and it is rubbing on the frame because the weight of the books was so heavy that it pushed the tire up against the underside of the U-Haul. Uh, so uh, fast forward, I'm freaking out. One of the guys, super nice, brings me to a hotel nearby. I book a room. I don't have any clothes. I don't have, you know, yeah. other than what I'm wearing. Uh, and so it's just completely scrambled. I have to go get a new U-Haul. I have to hire movers to move the books from the U-Haul that we put them in to the other U-Haul and then immediately drive home the next day. And I didn't stop. So I, I got in probably a three or four in the morning. What um When that happened, where did you then did you have a storage or facility already mm -hmm. in place type yeah. of thing or so um thankfully uh once we were back here we have enough friends that they can help us move that stuff and it's not quite a struggle anymore um but we had a storage unit uh just like a 10 by 10 unit and it literally it stacked it up from like the floor to the ceiling of this unit it was completely this 10 by 10 box full of boxes <laughs> it was crazy wow yeah. Out of curiosity, because um, and obviously I know I know Ali is a big book person mm. and has not quite a bit of knowledge. Obviously, I know that you guys sell, you know, obviously you guys sell the books here, um, you know, and I, and from my understanding, I think it's like paperbacks are like five bucks. The hardcovers are like 10. The large formats are like 15. So it's like a really fairly good price um, for these. You know, obviously they're used books. But I also know that you got some originals and you got some, you know, higher end books that are yeah. collectibles. So, like, how do you go about something like that? Like, is it something that I know and I'm always kind of intrigued by that? Because obviously that's another whole business in itself mm -hmm. um, from that collection. Have you guys found, um, you know, because obviously I don't know if you've gone through all 10,000 books. No. So no, I'm assuming so it's like an adventure every time you open a box of like, oh, where what is this going to be? And Absolutely. And then are you guys just doing like your research? Yeah. Does Ali just have certain knowledge already on some of these things? And then how are you guys like, because I mean, obviously it's another form of income I'm assuming is mm. trying to sell some of these like higher end, right. um, newer editions or maybe old mm -hmm. antiquity books type mm -hmm. of things. So it's, it's, it's funny because that question is actually one that we get a lot and it's sort of uh, hard to answer because you just, what I say is you just end up getting the eye for the book. Like you can, I could scan across you know, if I go to Goodwill or something, I can scan across and I'd be like, oh, but wait, there's that one. And it, I can tell by the way that it's, you know, that it looks on the side with the binding and stuff that it's, you know, it might be worth something or it might be valuable. Who knows? And it's it's just strange because it's the more you do it, the more it's just like reflex. So like a bookworm sense, kind of like yeah, spider senses. Exactly. But like, you're like, mm, exactly. Yeah. This one looks good. Right, right. But um, yeah, so... I mean, going through these books, though, we found a couple, like, for example, we had one that we just sold, and it was actually the um, the World Health Organization's writings on smallpox and its eradication. And it's this book that's, like, enormous. It's, like, six six inches thick, probably. Wow. And, uh, and that was just part of that auction. Um, but I put it up online because the cheapest I could find it was, like, $400 for just that book. Jeez. And we just sold it for 300 and so like, that's great. That's just one book out of this, you know, 10,000 plus yep. and plus all the ones that we haven't even, you know, boxes we haven't gotten to who knows what's in them. So is it usually like a process where you guys are kind of have boxes at home and you're kind of like, anytime you have a free moment, you're kind of like cycling through to see if there's a, uh, any information like, Ooh, is this like, I is would, this a hidden gem or, right. or maybe while you're sitting here and the store's open and you're kind of like going through books. That's more accurate. Yeah, okay. I would love to say that we're doing this 24-7, but sometimes you got to turn you it gotta on. You got to have that work-life balance, man. I get it. I totally get it. <laughs> um, now, do you and Ali um, do this? Is, like, is this full, the full-time? Like, you guys are both doing this full-time? Or do you do this kind of like, you know, you kind of, you're able to work from the store? Or how does all yeah. that kind of work? So, I, I am able to work from the store, and I, I do... Um, uh, technical writing as well. Okay. So the really, you know, dry, boring stuff. But thankfully that brings in enough income for me where this is just kind of the passion project. Yeah. At least for now. Yeah. Who knows what the future holds. And then for Ollie, Ollie is really the one taking the, you know, the the paycheck because they're the one putting in like the desk hours. They're the one that actually uh, running the show more than anything else. I'm just here to put the books on the shelf and, Got and it. destroy myself going to Rome, Georgia and what all that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I definitely, uh, I definitely understand that. How did you guys come up with the name Joybird Books? So um, we were actually, I still have the message, but we were talking on Messenger, and uh, we were just coming up with band names. And Ollie was like, Joybird would be a cool band name. And this is before the book 
thing. Yeah. Uh, and so after I won the auction, which is only a few days after that message, I was like, so Joybird, how about Joybird books instead of for a band? And I still have this message because Ollie was like, oh my God, it's perfect. And you know, again, it was just one of those, it just falls into place sort of thing. Do you guys, do you guys, do, are you guys also looking to do a band or is this, because like, oh, is hey, that as a creative side or yeah, is that yeah. something that you guys, or is it just a fun thing? You're like, Hey, let's just brainstorm <laughs> restaurant names. You know, like it's, it's one of those things, okay. but it's also, I mean, I did used to play uh, in a band, okay. um, you know, play shows and stuff. So we, we are, we also play music, but it's more of like a, a hobby than it is like anything else but who knows yeah. you know maybe we can do open mics here who knows so <laughs> the space i think is what like 1200 is it 1200 feet square feet yep. or something like that 1200 square feet okay and i know that you guys i i love the idea of what you guys are trying to do because obviously like i use it in the like i said it in the intro you kind of want to create a collaborative space for i want to say creativity literacy yeah. community you guys do um you guys do a really good job at like you know in the, in the short time kind of figuring out like hey what can what are some things i can do um, I love the name Crafternoons, um, <laughs> where you guys can, people can come in and do crafts. You guys do children's story time. Um, you know, I think you guys have done movie nights where yeah. you're kind of doing the whole concept, which my daughter would agree is like movie books that turn into movies, mm -hmm. um, and doing those type of things, even though she's always going to say that the book <laughs> is better than the movie. Of course, of course. Um, but you know, still it's something that I think is kind of, a, it's great for people to see to kind of be like, Oh, that was a movie. I was a book. I didn't know that was a book. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and things like that. So I think that like, that's super huge um i know you guys are kind of looking at trying to create additional or kind of get creative with like additional spaces to kind of maybe even do like an open mics mm -hmm. and stuff like that is that true yeah so um a couple things just really rapid fire too yeah uh, up front at our store we have local authors and uh so we're very like local focused all of the vendors that we have here are local craft people that like we've met in person they're not just like random buy it in yeah. bulk online stuff um and so we've actually been also working with Rachel Simmons from the Book Arts Guild of Central Florida, uh, and we'll hopefully be doing more projects here based on that. Like, for example, uh, we want to take some of these these books that aren't moving or like that are too damaged to sell, and we want to um, basically remake pages from them, like uh, bring it back down to pulp and then recycle wow. and, do, and do things like that. So we, we have a lot of like event ideas planned out. It's just a matter of like setting the date and doing yeah. it. So, and it's, you know, we're still so young. We've only been open six months. I was going to say, like, Andrew, like, uh, <laughs> you know, you're still a baby, dude. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like the That's, joy bird's yeah. still a little, a little just chirp, just like lightly chirping. You yeah. Know, still. It's, it's still a little fledgling. So, yeah. um, but again, you know, in the future we have all these ideas floating around. So it's just a matter of slowly like, implementing them yeah no i think it's great i mean i think it's and, and i think it shows the importance that it is to build um build in the community and i think that's something that is so important to be yeah. able to have um you know community buy-in and be able to kind of do Absolutely. that type of thing so i think that's kind of that's huge right i guess what's been one of those things i kind of i wrote a, i wrote a fun question because i was trying to get i was like if you were to write a book oh, about man. your journey <laughs> about you know about you know being like a used you know book pop-up you going from you know from that to brick and mortar what would you say are lessons learned that you would power provide your readers to kind of mm. if they were reading the book what are some things that you maybe learned along the way <laughs> uh and obviously like i will say i'll admit like way accelerated so like yeah. i feel like in some cases <laughs> it almost like ignorance is bliss type oh, of thing yeah. oh yeah where the, it definitely the helps amateur artists yeah like, but you know and yeah. hey that's but that sometimes <laughs> i think that's what you need because we get in our own heads yeah yeah like thinking uh, there has to be one way to do yeah. this but there really doesn't and so if if i were to like you know when i tell the story i i always go back to uh, just quieting that anxious voice down and and saying you know what's the worst that could happen and yeah obviously there's a lot of bad things but ultimately what's the worst that could happen you know ultimately if you put all those you know oh i could i could have flipped the u-haul or whatever and put all that aside and yeah that's what you get to yeah no it's kind of like uh i don't know like i always go back to uh the silencio bruno on Lu there's a yeah. luca in uh in the yeah, disney, yeah. disney plus movie it's like i think of that like it's like that little that's person very good yeah that's a good that's a good way to put it too that's funny that person inside of you i totally uh i totally get that where um what advice 
what advice would you give someone just kind of, I guess, in general, like trying to start something? What, like, mm. besides the the inner voice, like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, having to obviously work the two of you. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm always intrigued by that when you have like a, a partner mm-hmm. um, involved because you both either have to be like, are you guys usually, uh, you know, kind of like in the same mindset, kind of in the same idea, or are you guys like a yin and yang style? I'd say it's a little, I mean, honestly, it's a little bit of both, but um, I, I think that we keep each other in check is really what it comes down to. Like Ollie, like I have these big, big lofty, like I want to do this crazy event here. And then Ollie's like, okay, but like, let's think about it a little, even though Ollie is really more the creative side. And I'm like, you know, that's, so it is like that yin and yang sort of thing. So, but uh, yeah, I I, I really think that we balance out each other really well. And and that absolutely is is 90% of the success. Um, Everything else will fall into place if you can keep, you know, that dynamic working. What's your favorite, I, I guess, since you've been doing it now for about six months, what's been your favorite part of having, uh, owning a, your own bookstore? Um, really just all the people that you get to meet, like just all these, all, you know, you never know who's going to come walking in the door for, you know, for example, there was a, a guy that came in, we have a piano set up here that you can play. Anyone can play. Uh, he just walked in with his daughter. They were looking at books and he goes and sits down at the piano and he starts playing it. Like it's, you know, he made it sound like the most beautiful piano I've ever heard. And uh, all of a sudden, you know, I was like, oh, can I film you? And he's like, oh, yeah, I have. I mean, I have a Wikipedia page and stuff. And so we looked him up and he's like this, you know, famous composer. Uh, I, I really wish I could remember his name off the top of my head. I don't know if he'd want me to tell. Yeah. But uh, in any case, he, he was like, yeah, like it's nothing, you know, and you just again, you never know who's going to walk in. And, and blow your mind that day. Yeah. No, I, I, I that, and that's kind of, I think the fun part about having a brick and mortar location. And then also the fact that like, you don't know what anyone's gonna, you know, find. I mean, you definitely have a huge variety of different styles of books. Um, and I think it's interesting that you guys kind of in the, in many ways, I know I had looked like you had one room that was like full, like one of the, your side rooms that's like mm-hmm. full with books and boxes yeah. of like, Hey, these are still bu- books. And you also have I think from my understanding, you guys also would still also take, um, well, take donations as well as also take for credit and stuff like that to be able to get. So you're constantly growing your collection. Yeah, it's it's really like it's a it's a self feeding, you know, machine at a certain point, basically, because yeah. the community is going to bring their books. They're going to put them out and those books are going to sell. And then those people, you know, and it's it becomes like a self-sustaining organism, you know, I love it. I love it. What do you why do you think? Because obviously this is like one of the the only the one of the only few that's like owner you know independently owned used bookstores. Why do you think there isn't as many out there? I mean, obviously I know we're going you know it's kind of like the Barnes and Noble, the larger companies, they're even kind of going downsizing. Um, but why do you think that that's you know what's the importance of it, or why do you think they're you know the significance of why it's so important to have one in the community? Yeah, honestly, I I think that. It really, the survival depends on how well connected they are, not just to the the literary community, but the art community in general, or just the community itself in general, you know, like being connected to the place that you are. And that that's really the, uh, the downfall of a lot of the smaller used ones. And one that a pitfall that we tried to avoid was, was getting tucked away in some like little strip mall and nobody knows you're there. And unless they're looking it up and then you struggle to get people to look you up because yeah, but being right here on Corinne, we're like front facing. So, you know, people stop, they'll turn around and be like, Oh my God, a book, a bookstore. So let, let's talk about the, and I'm just kind of curious, like, is there, is there an interesting story on how you guys even came about this? Cause like you guys are in prime real estate in yeah. Audubon park. Uh, you know, you're, you're, like I said, you're next to Kelly's you're next to across the street from East end. Uh, yeah. you know, you got, you're in a great little spot, great little neighborhood. Um, you know, how did it, you know, what's the story? Is there like a a fun story of how that came about? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. So, um, I, my son, uh, Elias goes to, um, the Orlando gifted Academy, which used to be Fern Creek elementary. Um, and so every morning we drive, we would drive the strip and I saw it, you know, for lease, for lease, for lease in the window. And I was like, ah, I'm not even, and this is when we're trying really hard to find a good place, but I was like, I'm not even going to call this one. I'm not going to waste my time. And so we keep driving by and it's been like a week. It's been like a week and a half. And I'm like, all right, all right, I'll call. And as soon as I call, I get a call back. Um, the, the man who owns this uh, building, his name's John Penny. He's a, another local Orlando person. 
um, you know, very, very kind person. His wife's very kind. Uh, and we sat and talked and they had a lot of other people that wanted the space, but they wanted to find the right fit. And so it was a matter of being like, this is the right fit. Yeah. And, and it just kind of made sense. And so it's, it's just another, you know, uh, circumstance thing where it just so happened yeah. that I was going to be able to work with these nice people who are actually, you know, in the community here. Uh, and it just so happened that, you know, there was no other bookstore there. And it, so it kind of works out. I mean, and, and I think that sometimes those things, those things happen for a reason, you know, it's yeah. just like, it's meant to be. And the fact that you, uh, you know, it's like opportunity was knocking and you actually opened the door rather than kind of, you know, look out the window maybe yeah. and kind of look and, and think too much overthink it. You kind of just jumped on it and, and that's awesome. And I think sometimes you, we, uh, I know I'm sometimes guilty of it where you kind of see opportunity and maybe you're like, maybe I shouldn't. And, and it's, and all it takes is a phone call, you know, yeah, and it kind of exactly. just builds from there. So that's awesome, man. Andrew, do you have a, do you have a favorite book? Ooh, favorite book. Any Murakami. I'm still big Murakami guy. Um, After Dark's really good. So I, okay. I would say that one, it's a uh, one that transports you to a different, different place. Love it. What, um, do you, based on, since I know you guys do, um, books to movies, do you have, is, do you, do you feel or have seen any book that has actually done, they've done a decent job going from book to movie? Honestly, I'm not a big movie guy, but okay. we last night and part of the reason I was delayed this morning was we stayed up till about four in the morning watching Lord of the Rings. Cause I had never watched Lord of the Rings okay. ever. I never read the book, never watched the movie. And so I, I, I tried reading the book a couple times, and this is the story that everyone has with Lord of the Rings, right? Is they try to read it, and they're like, oh, I can't do it. But then you watch the movie, and it's like, oh, it's so amazing. And so it was, you know, mind-blowingly Did amazing. you watch, how, how many did you watch? We watched, I fell, I fell asleep right at the tail end of the third one. Okay. So. <laughs> wow, yeah, I mean, it's, that's a tough, those are some tough ones. They're like very, uh, very long, very detailed. Oh, yeah. Um, it's amazing. It but was yeah. amazing, though, for sure. And I, I would never go back. I, well, I don't want to say never, but I feel very uh, like it's unlikely I'm going to go back to the book when I could just watch the movie again. So <laughs> yeah, it's funny because I've been my daughter. My daughter's been told to read Lord of the Rings. It's and so I'm much. like and I keep telling her I was like she's like yeah but I read Harry Potter I was like yeah it's a little different yeah. and I was like I was like maybe so yeah so it's yeah. kind of one of those where I could totally uh, I could totally see that um, being one of those things what um do you guys have anything upcoming in the sense of like um you know I know you guys kind of talk about like you know hey we want to do all these activities and events do you guys have like have you guys talked about like goals of where you're trying to go like okay you've now at six months. You got like, you know, what, where you're thinking of being in the next, you know, at your year anniversary or maybe yeah. four or five years, do you guys kind of go that far advance or do you guys kind of just go like, Hey, let's just do, you know, a few months at a time. What's really, your thought process? It, it is really um, more of a few months at a time sort of thing, especially again, because we're so, you know, like yeah. a little fledgling here. Um, but I would say that we work on this time frame of, okay, we've signed this lease here for two years. We're here for two years. What can we do in that two years? Yeah. And then when that two years rolls around and it's time to like renew, then we put all that thought into it and say, okay, is this sustainable? And so it's really like, that's what we're looking at. Um, and right now it is sustainable and it's, it's just getting more sustainable as time goes on. So, you know, I was going to say, it's kind of one of those where, I mean, um, you know, that's kind of the tough part. Sometimes you just kind of have to put the trust in the community of like, right. they're going to come and respond and provide things and, you know, and purchase. But it's also you, you know, it's also, it is on you to, to, you know, make the events and to like connect with the community. Yeah. Cause you can, you can sit at the, the front desk and say, hi, welcome. And then just not talk to anybody. Yeah. Or you can be at the front desk and be like, oh, hey, welcome in. You know, you're looking for anything in particular. What's, you know, what are you looking for? What brought you in? And just like start having a conversation versus just like, here are books, buy yeah. them. Well, and the other thing is that the nice thing about your store is that you're kind of coming in and it's almost like a little treasure hunt every time yeah. you come in because you don't know what you're going to find in each section. Exactly. Um, I love the fact that you guys do a lot of the local authors and the opportunity for local authors that, you know, but publishing that they can come in yeah. and kind of have their, you know, have an opportunity to sell their book in a bookstore, um, maybe even do events here yes, and stuff like absolutely. that, which I think is, uh, which I think is great. Cause you're kind of like forced, you know, you're kind of fostering uh, creativity and people to do that. So yeah. I think that's, uh, 
I love it. I think I think this is great. That's one of the reasons why when we first met, I was like, oh my gosh, I got to have you on because I'm just so intrigued by how you guys have gone about it. Where can people find you? Where can people, uh, where, how, you know, tell people where they can follow, follow find, and yeah. you maybe do some shopping just, online uh, or visit your store. Oh yeah, absolutely. So joybirdbooks.com. Um, we're on Joybird Books on Facebook. Uh, Joy, we got all the vanity URLs, so. Yes. Okay. But uh, any, just search Joybird Books. We'll pop right up. Sounds like a plan. Perfect. That's our show for today. Thank you so much to Andrew Walker of Joybird Books for being on, having lunch with me. Definitely make sure to check them out online. If you're in the Audubon Park, Orlando area and looking looking for used books, definitely go check them out. Um, If you enjoyed the show, definitely make sure to subscribe, leave a rating, some rankings, whatever you like to do. Uh, If you want to support me and check out my brand, Deli Fresh Threads, you can definitely do some shopping and obviously spread the word like PB&J. Thank you. Until next time, keep eating sandwiches and follow your passion. Thank you so much, everyone.